What's up, bushcrafters? Guess what it is? It's Q&A time. You guys ask a lot of Q's, I'm gonna have a lot of A's. Let's get started. All right, guys, so a few house yurt keeping items that we need to go over first. Number one, thanks everybody for asking questions. This was much more of a hit than I thought it was gonna be. Number two, don't get discouraged if I don't answer your questions. I am printing them out. If there's duplicates, you know, I might scratch those. But um, overall, I'm printing out the questions. If I don't get to all of them, because we all know I love a short video, that uh, we'll get to them in a future Q&A. Third, thank you for the support about the idiot comment, but honestly, that is probably one of the easier comments to ever swallow. Now, it never bothers me, and I said that in a video, but I thanks everybody for their support. I honestly don't listen to people, but I like to share that stuff, because if you're out there and you're thinking about maybe starting a channel or creating some type of video, you're gonna always have people like that so I just want you to know it happens to everybody I honestly keep a collection of the crazy comments I get because some of them are so off the wall you can't even imagine it, it just it, it's mind-blowing so we might actually do a video on just some of those comments in the future but if you're gonna think about starting a channel don't give up because somebody says don't do it just do what you want to do there's just too much out there in the world to worry what other people think and last but not least any questions that you have that we don't cover or you're wondering about, leave in the comments below and I'm not gonna answer them until the next Q&A. Hopefully this can be a weekly thing because this is something that's awesome. Okay, to get started, don't mind me, I gotta read off my paper here. We'll go down a couple if I feel like we're going too long. We'll stop and pick up where we left off in the next one. Um, what is the ideal size of a class that you teach? It's hard to say, it really varies. I know there's another question on this paper about how many instructors I have for let's nail both of those birds with one, two, two birds, one, okay. I think that the most ideal size class that I teach is anywhere between eight and 10 people. Um, it gives everybody just that one-on-one -on -one experience and it's not overly crowded, the class. If you start getting up over 12 or 15 people, it, it does get crowded real quick. With that said though, we have a complement of five instructors. I had four last year, I just brought on another one. So we really have a good staff to student ratio when you come here. So that is a very positive, everybody gets one-on-one -on -one attention. It's not like you're just mixed up into the crowd. Would you ever have a meet and greet or open house on your property? I would, we haven't yet. Next summer, we have an event that we are starting to work on already. It's gonna be awesome, it's gonna be free, it's gonna be here, you get to hang out all weekend. I'm not, I can't tell you anymore. What firearm do you take into the bush, if any? I'm not gonna answer this right now because this is a great video topic. I'm gonna do a full video on it. How do you sleep regarding footwear, boots on or off? I always take my boots off. Only time I don't take my boots off is if I am just laying up against a tree. I did that a few times with a wool blanket, leaned up against a tree because it just wasn't a conducive camping. I was in instructor situation and I couldn't sleep. I had to get up every so often, check on the students. I just left my boots on because it was a hassle on off. Why the fingerless gloves and who makes them? A uh, couple good sources for fingerless gloves, coldcrackerbushcraft.com, we carry wool fingerless gloves. I wear Filson fingerless gloves a lot and jawstownsend.com. They sell awesome gloves that they, they have never worn out and I have them for literally close to four years now. Why do I go with them? I just want that dexterity in my fingers to be able to work on things. And I've also never found a pair of full finger gloves that just hold up. The fingers always blow out and I end up with the fingerless gloves anyway. The yurt I did not make, I bought that from American Yurts. Unfortunately, the owner of that company passed away this past year. His son, is taking the business over. I don't know how ramped up they are right now to actually sell more yurts, but you can check them out online, Facebook, and uh, support them. They're out of Ohio, great people. Do you have any tricks to lighten up the load with vintage or army surplus? I think in any situation to lighten up your load, you just need more up here. The more you have up here, the lighter your load can be. And the more you spend time out here, the lighter your load can be because you just get more comfortable with your surroundings. You're always gonna deal with vintage gear though, that weight. I don't think there's anything really specific that you can get away with except changing your kit out every season, like I do. Are there any semi-local survival or bushcraft shows expos? I'm assuming that you are from Pennsylvania. So if you're anywhere in the Northeast area from 
even South Car North Carolina, South, South Carolina might be a little bit of a ride, but North Carolina, Virginia, Ohio, New York, all of these areas, Pennsylvania. The Utvine Gathering 2018, um, I was at it last year, it was the first year for it. It is near State College, Pennsylvania. I'll put the link below, go to it. I'm gonna be there. I know Creek Stewart will be there. Snow Walker Outdoors will be there. It's gonna be a good event. It's fun, it's in the middle of summer, you're gonna sweat. We set up our classroom area and hang out, lots of stuff to learn and lots of stuff to buy. It's something definitely to go to. Do you ever get concerned about using your fat wax in bear country or an area with predators? I made a video around fat wax is basically just tallow and a wax mixture I use on all my equipment. I'm gonna say this, I don't worry too much about bears or predators at all. If it comes to, let's say, a cougar like in Patagonia, um, if that thing's gonna kill me, it's gonna kill me. I don't think I really stand too much of a chance. Be safe, but I don't think I'm gonna stand much of a chance. Black bears, they are on my property. Two specifically that are always on my game cams, they run long before you even get near them, unless you're my wife. They, um, they stand and stare at each other. It's the most bizarre thing. I don't know. But anyway, my gear is covered in that stuff, everything, so I don't think that little container of fat wax that I carry is gonna track them in. It'll probably be all the other stuff I have with me, if anything, so I don't worry too much about it. What's the philosophy behind what you teach? My whole goal of teaching is, and the mission statement of my company is to create a lifelong passion for the wilderness. I just want people to come outside and enjoy themselves, not to, be upset that they have to come and camp or be frustrated and leave during a camping trip. I want people to just get outside and have a good time. All the skills I teach might be a little bit more advanced than something that a beginner would use, but I think if people watch those things and just lock on to one thing, maybe it's carving or starting a fire or setting up a different style shelter, it might just draw them in, get them outside and make them a little bit more comfortable. Plus I'm trying to show them that these things are doable. You don't have to be a super high level survivalist or bushcrafter to do them. I try to put them in very simple terms so you can go out and do them and enjoy them. And anytime I get somebody outside, it's a success for me. So that's really where my philosophy is around teaching. I just wanna make everything fun and enjoyable for people out here. What's my favorite piece of dumpster equipment? Um, <laughs> okay, this is a tough one. Uh, my trapper's ax that I got over this last year is one of my most favorite pieces of gear, but my belt pouch is also one of my most favorite pieces of gear. If I had to just pick one of them, I would probably pick my ax because I can just do more with my ax. My belt pouch is just something that I made very on in my bushcraft career. I always have it with me. So it's just like a sentimental thing, but that ax is by far my favorite piece of gear and it does look like it came out of a dumpster, but that's cool because it's just well used. What camera equipment do I use? Would you like to see a video on my camera equipment? Because I've really recently gotten more into camera equipment. We can go through everything if you want, let me know below. But um, primarily I shoot with a Canon XA25 video camera. And I also have a Canon 6D Mark II camera, which I'm shooting on now, road mics for everything. So that's my camera equipment. We can do a video on that. Not bushcrafty, but hey, you need camera equipment to do this stuff. What do I think about an Alice pack for bushcraft? Great piece of gear. What are my favorite YouTube channels? I'm a YouTube junkie. I'm constantly watching YouTube. I'm always typing in the search bar something and I go through the videos. I never try to let thumbnails or, or catchy titles suck me in. I always try to scroll down the list and see who's gonna have good content. But as far as channels that I like, um, my good friend, Dave Canterbury, I watch a lot of his videos. I watch Corporal's Corner, Black Hat Bushcraft, Surefoot Survival. I like all of them. And my favorite as of recently is Casey Neistat, amazing vlogger. I love his stuff. My question is, what do you think you would be doing as a job or career if you weren't able to do what you do now? Do I have anything else I'm very passionate about? I can't use trapping, take care. Okay, um, I'll tell this story. I think this is a pretty cool story to share with everybody. So I worked 
in the juvenile justice field for 11 years. After I got out of college, I started working at a treatment facility for juvenile delinquents. I did treatment with them. I worked as a supervisor. I did administration work there. I worked in their um, sales and corporate type um, setting. I got laid off. The whole facility downsized, ultimately closed, and I got laid off. It was two weeks after that that I got called for a loan and I went out. And I, that just made me think, what am I gonna do? I was really just burned out with my job and that's why I'm doing this now because I was like, it is the perfect time to do this. I I did teach before that, I was teaching and working. So it just all really worked out. Um, other passions that I have that I really love to do, I do like working with kids, so I probably work in some kind of capacity with kids. I cannot ever see myself working in a cubicle or an office that I am just trapped there every day. Even when I work with juvenile delinquents, um, halfway through that career, I was very mobile. I went from facility to facility, so that was great for me. Um, that is a tough question. I'm gonna think more about that. Would I ever consider doing a loan again? No. It's not that I hated the experience. It was a great experience. I loved doing it. Would I wanna do it again? No, I really, at this point in my life, I want to do another show that is going to promote our craft of bushcrafting. I want to get away from that sitting outside starving and everybody is in a state of drama. I just want a show that is going to teach all these things that I put on video in application and show life. I would love a show that I'm living out of this yurt for a while. I think it would be a good hit. If you're a network watching this, let's talk. Hey Dan, right now I'm a college student studying forestry. I love to do small bushcraft on the side. I was curious if you yourself have gone to school and if so, what did you study? I feel like I have been in school the, my, my entire life. It is, it's is—it's insane. Um, I am huge on education. I think that you should educate yourself all the time in anything that you're interested in. But yes, I did go to school after I got done high school. I went to college at Indiana University of Pennsylvania. I studied criminology with a minor in pre-law. I finished up there. Didn't go to law school because I went to get my master's degree in business administration, which I finished that up. While I was doing that, I also decided I wanted to learn how to weld. So I went back to welding school and I'm a certified welder. So yes, yes I did. What's my favorite meal to take in the backwoods? Dumplings. What fire making tools do you routinely carry on trips of more than half a mile from your home base? I always have the same equipment with me. Lighter, ferro rod, that's usually what I always have with me. Dave Gordon, why is abbreviation such a long word? I'm not sure. That is it, that's the question and answer series. I hope you guys like this, because I love doing this, and I think you guys are gonna get to know me a lot better through this. So if you have any questions, again, leave them below. We'll get to them on the next question and answer. If I didn't answer your question, look forward to the next video of me answering your question. And until the next video, Stay in the woods, guys.